Hello there, Lunar Squadron. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Star Wars Jedi Survivor video. Today, we are going to be talking about some very exciting new open world details that we received earlier this week. Unfortunately, we were unable to get to this news earlier because Nick got COVID, I got busy with work, things got very busy, but we really wanted to chime in on this topic because there are some really great new details about the open world in Star Wars Jedi Survivor. There's so much to talk about. We're going to get into all of that in just a moment. But first, guys, if you're new to the channel, we would absolutely love to have you. All you gotta do is hit that little red subscribe button and make sure to click the bell notification button right on next to it. It'll let you know every single time that Nick and I post the latest and greatest Star Wars Jedi Survivor content on YouTube. With that, Nick, you ready to talk about some open world details? Yes, I definitely am. All right, let's get into it. One of the things that has been so exciting about Jedi Survivor has always been that this is going to be more of an open world than we got in Fallen Order. And honestly, I think everyone is waiting for a open world Star Wars game. And while this game isn't a pure sandbox open world, there are going to be open world components to it. And we got some really great new details on Jedi Survivor's open world in this article. Nick, why don't you go ahead and kick us off with... Uh, what we learned here. Yeah, so the article that we are referring to is called How Star Wars Jedi Survivor Evolves the Metroidvania Roots of Jedi Fallen Order. And this was one of the last new bits of information, new articles that we got from IGN first. Their coverage has come to an end for Jedi Survivor, or so we can assume because they said it was just going to go throughout the course of February. And this article came on the last day of February. And since then, we haven't really gotten any new information or new articles. But in this article, like you said, they, they detail the open world aspects of Jedi Survivor or the new aspects and how they've evolved from Jedi Fallen Order. And like you said, this isn't going to be a straight open world game. So if people are expecting a straight open world game, that is not going to be the case with Jedi Survivor. It is going to be a Metroidvania style open world game. And we're going to kind of talk through all this new information and hopefully you'll have a better understanding as to what exactly they mean by Metroidvania as we go throughout this article. And where I want to start, Andreas, is with this quote where the design director says, quote, for Survivor, we knew that we wanted to add more optional areas for players to discover and explore. To do this, we knew that we needed to give better rewards for exploration. And then the IGN guy who's writing this article, who was a part of that five-hour playthrough, kind of provides some examples, some evidence as to how that exactly was going to take place or how he experienced this. As the next paragraph says, and sure enough, one of my own big takeaways from my five hours with a preview build of Jedi Survivor was that rewards for taking a detour away from the mainline quest path was always sufficiently rewarding. I'd regularly find tough battles that rewarded skill points, hidden traversal paths that led to new customizable options for Cal, or a shortcut that made traversal through the area much faster. So here, Andreas, in the opening paragraph, in the opening paragraphs of this article and from this first quote, we kind of get some insight as to what exactly Respawn is trying to accomplish as they're trying to broaden the world that Cal is in. You know, this is really exciting to me because my biggest pet peeve is when game designers try to go a, a bit more open with the world that they're designing, but then they don't put anything in it that's worthwhile, that, that's, that actually gives you a reason to go from corner to corner in the world. And we heard just from that nine minute gameplay that we received from IGN that some of those areas we saw, guys are not even mandatory. There's nothing that you have to do there. You don't have to go there, but if you wanted to, you'll find something like like that encampment that had uh, some collectibles in it that we saw. They're going to have areas like like whatever that, that big alien monster thing was. You don't have to go there, presumably, but if you want the loot that's behind the monster, you gotta go there, you gotta take him down, uh, and then you can o presumably open that vault that's behind him. So these are all really great ways that they are going to make the world in Jedi Survivor, most notably Koba, which is going to be the, the open world of Jedi Survivor. They're going to give you reasons to actually go places, and that's exciting for me. I, I, I'm sure it's exciting for you as well, Nick, right? 
Yeah, it definitely is. That is one thing I think was a major complaint for fans from Jedi Fallen Order was it just didn't feel like the game really offered much replayability. It kind of felt like it just pushed you along through the story, and by the time you finished the story, there wasn't really much of a reason to ever come back and, and play the game again outside of, you know, if you were interested in that Horde Arena-style game mode. There really just wasn't much of a reason to come back unless you wanted to play through the story again, and it was more of that, you know, linear-style story. And it's still going to be linear in nature. That's the nature of a Metroidvania style game. It's kind of this nice little hybrid between being linearly pushed throughout the story, but also open, you know, offering some open world aspects. And it's nice to see that one of the main driving forces behind Respawn going into Jedi Survivor is that they wanted to offer more replayability. This is something we've harped on in the past and something we've seen the game devs harp on in the past. And one of the best ways you can do that, and it's that's what they appear to be doing with Jedi Survivor, at least on Kobo, because again, they describe Kobo in this article as one of the main central hubs or the main central hub for Cal in this game. And one of the ways they're offering that replayability, one of the best ways you can do it is create a more open world aspect and not just create a more open world aspect, but like you said, put stuff in there for the player to do, put side quests in there, put stuff to go find, to discover. Now we have these Jedi chambers. We're going to be able to go through these Jedi chambers and get collectibles and skill points and perks and all of this stuff. And we've just seen the evidence grow over the last few months of all of this new stuff that's put into Jedi Survivor. And here we have this culmination in this article as we can continue throughout as to exactly how they're going to be doing that. And that is incredibly exciting. Speaking of all of the things they're going to be putting in this world, um, first off, uh, they really make an emphasis that there are going to be optional things to do. So these aren't requirements. These are these are things that you can choose to do. Just like you said, Nick, this is going to really improve replayability in this game. The quote from the article reads, we knew that we wanted to add more optional areas for players to discover and explore the article continues, uh, this is a quote from Majors again, we put a lot of work and focus into our customization system for this game so that our cosmetics would be more exciting to find, while also adding more gameplay rewards for exploration. By exploring the worlds, players will both make Cal more their own through customization and more powerful and equipped to take on the challenges ahead with skills, upgrades, and perks found in optional areas. Now, this is something that I really like about this game, guys, because, first of all, with the robust customization system that we have, there's going to be more of an incentive to actually go out and find stuff. We're not just collecting ponchos anymore. You are going to be able to customize Cal from his lightsaber to, to even BD's appearance in this game, which is really cool. And Aside from that, we also saw with the power-ups, there are multiple skill trees in this game, guys. You are going to have perks. There's a perk system. So there's a lot more to find. It's not just these, these meditation chambers either. It's going to be throughout the world, which is just really cool to see. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, in Fallen Order, you know, you were able to change his lightsaber. You're able to customize it. You were able to customize aspects of BD, but it definitely looks like even though those elements were in Fallen Order, what we've seen from the pre-order bonuses and what we've seen from the gameplay, that's going to be taking those elements, will be taking a step up in Jedi Survivor on top of all of this new stuff from the additional skill trees, the new perk systems, the new customization stuff for Cal's appearance. There is going to be so much more stuff and they're going to be upgrading the stuff that we already had in Fallen Order. Now, I want to move on to this next paragraph because I think this next paragraph provides a lot of exciting information about this game, insight as to what the dev was trying to accomplish, and gives us a lot of great information about how Kobo is going to work. It says, speaking specifically about the design goals of Kobo, lead level designer Martin Badowski said that Respawn wanted to create a planet with a dense central area that players would have fun gradually opening up more and more. While playing through Kobo during my preview time, I got the sense that it would om it was almost like a mixture between Firelink Shrine from Dark Souls and a world straight out of Metroid. Like Firelink Shrine, the Cantina and Rambler's Ranch served as a central hub that NPCs would congregate at, with multiple areas within the Cantina that would open up as I progressed throughout the campaign. And then outside of that, there was this giant Metroid-like world to explore with several paths 
that I could not access with my current slate of upgrades. So I want to focus on a few things from this paragraph. I definitely want to focus in on, but that will, that will, as we progress through this article, the last sentence where it talks about my current slate of upgrades, because we get a quote later on that it speaks to that, that I think we both find very interesting. But what I find really cool here is just the description of how big, important open Kobo is going to be, how there's going to be so much to do on this open world. And we know that Kobo is going to serve as the central planet for Jedi Survivor. And it just makes me wonder if any of the other planets are going to be like this, or if it's really just going to be Kobo that's going to be this dense and full of stuff to do. You know, my biggest critique of Fallen Order, and for those of you who, who have followed the channel will know this critique from me, is that Fallen Order was not very popular. There wasn't too much going on. Um, even when we had more open areas, there just it, there was a few creatures here and there, but no real NPCs, so it felt like it wasn't a lived-in world. And one specific thing in this paragraph that you just read, Nick, that really gets me excited is that NPCs are going to be congregating in Rambler's Ranch Cantina. And I know that's a very small detail, it's a very small thing, but just the fact that there are going to be NPCs congregating is a really nice feature for me, because Star Wars, one of the reasons why I love it is the universe is lived in, it's populated, there's stuff going on, and I I love, you know, the more pasture areas like, like Naboo and stuff like that, but I, when I'm thinking of a Star Wars game, I want to go to a populated area, I want to live in the Star Wars galaxy where there are NPCs doing things, where, where it looks like there is already a town, that there's an established area that, that, that works, and I hope that, that the Rambler's Ranch Cantina is going to represent something like that. But also, Nick, to, to kind of take your point a bit further about the current slate of upgrades and how this is going to limit um, the accessibility to the rest of the world, this is really at the heart of what Metroidvania means. So it, for those of you who don't know, um, they, they provide a very great explanation of what Metroidvania and Metroid-inspired games, what, what that means. So uh, the quote here is, Metroid-inspired games at their core are about discovering new abilities and then using those abilities to pass obstacles, unlock more regions, and eventually develop a sort of intimacy, understanding, and dominance over the game world. So the idea is that at the beginning of the game, Cal isn't going to be able to access everywhere in Kobo, but as he begins to accrue new abilities and upgrades throughout playing through the game, he will ultimately be able to access all of the areas of Kobo and he will be able to uh, have dominance over the game world. He will be able to access every single area of Kobo without breaking a sweat, but presumably maybe there are going to be enemies or creatures or, or other barriers that will prevent you from getting uh, to certain areas in this game until you become powerful enough, until you gain the certain abilities that will allow you to go to those areas. That's just another reason that will incentivize the player to go back to areas in this game. Once they've progressed through the game, you're going to have reasons to go back and go to new areas that you might have never been before. Yeah, and you know, I want to focus in on the next thing that Major says here that I think is like the home run like quote from this whole article is where he says... And to, to do that, we made sure that every time the player revisits one of these regions, there would be a lot of new things to discover using their newly acquired toolkit. So like you said, you won't be able to access everything immediately when you crash land on Kobo. You're going to have to return to Kobo as you progress through the game and unlock new abilities, unlock new skills, unlock new tools, whatever that may be. We're not quite sure yet. But you're going to have to return to Kobo to get all of those things that you want to get. All of those optional, you know, customization things, skill points, all of that stuff. It all is going to work in tandem. You're going to have to come back multiple times. And that just speaks to the overall level of replayability that they are trying to accomplish in Jedi Survivor. They are going, to, you know, you're going to have to come back multiple times if you're going to want to be able to do everything. And we just never got anything like that in Fallen Order. I know they've spoken in the past that they want to do, you know, try to make a Metroid-like game and fall in order, but it just really never felt like it got to that level. And it feels like, at least in regards to Kobo, we don't know how the other planets are fully going to work. We have some information about the moon planet, but we don't know how all of the other planets are going to work. But at least when it comes to Kobo, 
they really are pushing for that Metroidvania style game. That it was really a big driving force behind the inspiration of going to Kobo in Jedi Survivor. And, you know, before we move on to the last few points of this article, I just want to say how much I agree with you that I don't think people realize just how big of an addition having a populated area is going to be. It's a very subtle thing. But I think once people realize how populated at least Rambo's Ranch is going to be, how much that is going to elevate this game. It's very subtle stuff like that that really helps elevate games. And we've talked about this in the past. And I think that's a really key detail that they pointed out in this game that I, or in this article that is going to help elevate this game. That it's just going to be very subtle and perhaps go through the subconscious of people. And people aren't going to realize it. But when you do realize it, I think you'll realize how big of an of a improvement that is for Jedi Survivor. And then... Just the last few points, just because we've we've been going on for a long time here, just to kind of get through it. They talk about how they wanted to address some pain points that players had while exploring areas of Fallen Order. They say how they moved the Mantis landing pads to more central locations on planets so that players would have easier access to all of the different regions that the planet had to offer. And more substantially, they added fast travel. And then the last paragraph just talks about how fast travel is going to work. They say, fast travel in Jedi Survivor works by finding meditation points and resting at them when you rest at a meditation point you are able to select fast travel and quickly warp to any other meditation point you've discovered on the planet according to majors the team took great care to ensure that the player never needs to use fast travel to complete their journey but that it's a valuable tool for those who want to explore every inch of the expanded game world so andreas we just get some more details about some quality of life improvements they've moved the mantis to this more central area so you don't have to backtrack all the way back to the beginning and go on this linear path it creates more of this open world feel by having the mantis land in the middle and then we get this information about fast travel and they point out something that andreas you and i have been saying this entire time they make sure to state that fast travel is not mandatory it is just something there as a quality of life improvement if you want to use it yeah i know a lot of people have taken issue with fast travel being included in this game but guys i don't know why you would be disappointed that there's flat fast travel when you could just ride a space pterodactyl to get around like you could always choose to use the in-universe stuff if you want you can ride the space ostrich like you can do whatever you want you don't have to use the meditation points to fast travel if you want to do you know a more in-universe approach here you can take that approach they've given you uh the ability to tame and ride mounts in this game to get around but i i i'd love to see of everyone that's complaining about fast travel once you actually see how big this game is and how big kobo is i wonder how many people are actually going to uh to change their mind and actually start giving in and using the fast travel especially with the fact that we're going to have to revisit places and and go from corner to corner you're actually going to have a reason to go from corner to corner in this game and one key detail here nick that you said that i really love is that the mantis is centrally located that is such a little thing but i i love that because honestly when you land in a world and you are on a new planet one of the things that i love is that you have the choice to go in any direction it's not just a linear path that you only have one option you gotta go in a straight line and then you have to backtrack all the way back when you have a centrally located mantis that means that you have the option to go north south east west and it makes it more of an open feeling to the game even if it's more metroidvania not quite pure open so that's just a little detail that i think is really going to help the immersion of this game and that's the word that i'm getting from this article immersive this game is going to be so much more immersive yeah you you're absolutely right and you know it's just another one of those small quality of life subtle things like a populated area that's going to help elevate the level of game and yes on its own central mantis might not be a big deal yes on its own populated area might not be a big deal but these things add up very quickly and it they are going to add up quickly and when you have all of these quality of life improvements all of a sudden you're going to sit there you know you're going to be sitting there playing this game and you're going to be like wow this game is so much better than fallen order and i loved fallen order but man they really listened to us they really just improve the hell out of the quality of my life as a gamer in the star wars universe and i think people should be incredibly excited about all of these new details they're not you know genre defining game breaking details but they're also they're very key important small details that will add up quickly to make this game 
so much better than Fallen Order, at least in theory. Again, we won't know for sure until we get our hands on this game, but in theory, it looks like Respawn is on the right track and that they are definitely trying to improve your overall quality of life in Jedi Survivor. So guys, let us know down below in the comments what you thought of all of this new information we got about the open world. What detail did we get that excites you the most about how we know Kobo is going to work? Let us know down below in the comments. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for us for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, we will see you all next time.